morning, everybody. We're at Creative Mornings. And today's theme is one called End. So for those of you who don't know about Creative Mornings, globally, we all talk about the same topic every month. And today's theme was End, and it's from Creative Mornings in Rio de Janeiro, which is this lovely crew. They have better weather than us, so they look like they do picnic versions <laughs> of Creative Mornings, which is amazing. <laughs> we could. I mean, there's people with umbrellas and stuff, which is probably, <laughs> probably not the look that we're going for. So this is a, a little manifesto that Creative Mornings is all about. I won't read it all, but basically it wants to bring us all together because everybody is creative and everybody is welcome, which is like the ethos that we live by around here. And the, and the, the ladies from Mainframe, Hannah and Charlene, Charlene is at the back, Hannah is this one, um, have been bringing all the creative people together. For, how long have you been going now, Mainframe, right? Well, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Just started. Tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. Tip of the iceberg. But um, so we're, we're really proud to add this edition of Creative Mornings into the Derby Creative community and our wider East Midlands friends. Um, but we can't do this without our sponsors and our friends. So globally, we're supported by MailChimp. This is MailChimp, great little email tool, WordPress, and Adobe who give us some lovely design capability. Um, but more importantly, if I'm honest, sorry, Creative Morning HQ, but more importantly, we have, oh, this is me, look. I made it onto a global thing. That's why that's in there, just a bit of glory, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, it's our local sponsors and our local friends. And, and Mainframe and Quad, which are here, we wouldn't do it without them, and we couldn't do it without them. And they've, they've lent us this amazing place and a cafe and a thing. So a massive round of applause with all of your might for Mainframe and Quad. Thank you very much. Woo. Woo. That was better than when everybody's here, by the way. <laughs> that was the best one. Um, and also, Future Proof Films, who are all at the back holding tech stuff in Proof Films. We, we've, now, we've now had confirmation from Ross, our speaker today, externally, that our videos are better than anybody else's videos. So this is all kudos to those guys. Yay. Thank you very much. Finally, Essential Print Service, Yvonne. Yeah. Woo! Just Yvonne, whoa! <laughs> Who made... Look at these. Oh. Look at those. <laughs> Look at those compared to the ones I did in the frames. Look at those. Amazing. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Yvonne. So, the main event, the reason that you're all here and you've all dragged yourself out on a balmy July morning is to see this chap, Mr. Ross Davis. Yay. So, Ooh. Ross, you're, woo. <laughs> well done, you get time, mate. You get the plaudits at the end, right? Um, so, Ross is a guy I've known, we've figured out since about 2012 this morning. Um, and he's, he's super smart and he runs one of the, the best businesses and is somebody I've looked up to from a business perspective for all of that time. So he's got some good words to say. His list of plaudits and achievement and awards are massive, but you can find them on our page. So please have a look on the flyer and read his, his uber long kind of bio now, full of awards and stuff, right? You did, were you? But anyway, without further ado, let's get Ross Davis to the stage. Ross Davis, please. Are you back? It's down, right? It's hot, Mum. Down. Right, yeah, cool. Uh, hi, guys. Hope you're all well. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to randomly start my talk with, like, my end slide, which might not make sense, but the whole point is obviously to discuss the end. Uh, I'm going to try to break this down, so we're going to do the what, we're going to do the why, and then we're going to do the how. Uh, I'm going to try and make this as non-guru as possible, because I'm not. Uh, I'm just going to try to talk it from personal experiences of, of kind of what, I've, what I know. So like all good talk presentations, I did the really obvious thing, and I Googled it, and I wrote in uh, the end, define. And I thought that would probably be a relatively good place for me to start. Uh, 
And what I got was this very depressing thing that said a final part of something, especially a period of time, activity, or a story. And then the example that was given was the end of the year. Now, to me, this, this is incredibly depressing. It's not particularly fun. And I thought that might be the most boring talk that we could have for 20 minutes. So I'm going to try avoid that. One big thing that I try to have in my own life anyway is avoid any form of negativity, make sure that everything's positive. So I'm going to try to put a bit of a positive spin on it. So instead of looking at the, the, the end in a bad way and how it can be very final and how there's nothing that we can do with it and it's kind of the end, what I want to do is look at how I use the end in my own personal life and how we can apply things to that. So the part that I will be looking at it from is, a, I guess, from a, how I use the end to achieve my goals and where I want to go and put a very positive spin on it. So I'm sure this isn't just me, but this is definitely me still, and I try my best not to. But here's me in the middle, and I'm like, yeah, I should, I should be setting goals, and I should be planning things out, and I should know what my end is, or I could totally just coast, hope for the best, and we'll just crack on, and we'll see what happens, and all will be good. And obviously, life doesn't work like that. So... I want to talk about kind of goal planning or what the end is. Now, before I can move to the end, and this is where we get these kind of arrows all pointing in different directions. Um, now, before I know what the end is, I can't just decide what the end is because I don't know enough about it. So for me to figure out what my end is, I need to be doing lots of different things. Now, that means that my journey, I need to be on my journey, I need to be in the correct place. But before I can figure out all the right things that I want to do as part of my journey, I need to go back to the start. So we can start to see how all of these things are going to start interlinking in. So figuring out what's, uh, what, what we start with is going to be really, really critical. And the other thing is what is important to us. Uh, and I've just put in here as a warning, I'm going to be tight roping this thing of coming across as a guru, and I'm not in the slightest. I'm essentially making this up based on my life experiences. So apologies. Please try to take it in a, in a nicer way. So we're going to go... I said back to the future, but back to the past. But we're going back in time. We're going to go to 2010 when I first set my business up. Uh, I was a very different person. I was 21. Um, I did originally plan on showing you because my dad made me put one together. Um, he made me put like this mood board or like this dream board together of what I was going to have. And my plan was to show you that and talk you through it. But it was one of the most embarrassing things because I've not looked at it in years. <laughs> it, was, it was horrific and it had like... Can you send it to us after? No. But it had, like, photos that I wouldn't want people to see and then, like, what I thought was the idea of success. So instead of that, I've just taken some snapshots and I'm just going to pull out some of the elements that were referenced on there. So it had things like fancy cars. It had an Audi R8 on there. It had a Porsche 911. Um, it had loads of really OTT, like, designer wrap clothes. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, you know, that like massive belt. With, like, I was like, this is what success is and these massive chains and all these ridiculous, like, huge watches. I mean, I have literally child's wrists, so I can't wear a watch. Yet, I was planning on covering myself in, in things such as that. And, like, an over-the-top bachelor pad, and, like, I wanted a lift that went straight out into my place and all these sort of things. Um, and, and this is what, for some reason, I decided as a 21-year-old was going to be my end goal, that if I got here, this is clearly what success was, this was my end goal, this was my purpose, and this is what I was aiming for. And now, being a little bit older, I look back at that and think, that's, that's really, really stupid. Um, but also, it made me realise, as I was putting this presentation together and practising this, is actually what, what possibly made me think that that was the right end for me. And I think that's something that I really had to think about. Now, the obvious things are we look to popular culture. So we look to TV, we look to movies, especially social media. We're looking on social media, we're seeing what other people are doing, and we're like, oh, they look, they're doing that, or they've just got this thing. And you know how like, people on social media will post something where they're not trying to show it off, but they clearly are? So it's like, oh, just getting into my really amazing car, but I'm just talking about something else. You get a lot of that, and I think that's what we need to be careful of. The other thing is we, we, don't, we don't really plan. So therefore, this is the quick answer. We just kind of guess based on what we quickly see around us that these things might be attractive to us and these should be our end goal because we've not put that thought into it. Now, to me, this is where the thought comes in. And this is why this one's so much harder because what do we love and why do we love doing it is so much harder to answer. And we don't know, which will tie in with my guess. Now, I'm going to go off on a really random tangent here, but it will all loop back in, so follow me with this. Now, Tim, you might already know this one about me, but I'm obsessed with using Parkinson's law 
in my life, in my business, in everything I do. So Parkinson's law is the idea that a task will take as long or as long as you allow it to have. So if you give a task a year to complete, it will take you a year. If you do that same task and you give it six months, you'll do it in six months. Again, if you give that same task a week, you will do it in a week. Now, the difference will be, obviously, the quality of the work will obviously change depending on what it was. You know, if you have a year or you have 10 minutes, the quality of the, the answer that you get or the thing that you do at the end is always going to be different. But Parkinson's law is really, really crucial. So we use it constantly for everything in our business. You know, if we've not even started a design yet, I'll still book in the V1 meeting for me to present it to a client so that the guys know they've only got a small amount of time to get that done. But the way Parkinson's law, I think, works, because it works with absolutely everything, is if someone or we're trying to quickly decide what we're going to do in our own lives, we just jump to the first thing. So rather than us dedicating you know, a couple of hours or weeks or even months to figuring out what's important to us, we just go, this, this thing's important to me. Like if someone asks you, and this is why I wanted to ask you now, I'm not gonna ask anyone to kind of read out questions, uh, say answers or anything, but if I asked you what your end goal was, what your end is, what you're planning to get to, if I gave you kind of 30 seconds to think of that, You'd be, you might know, you might have already worked this out and that would be great, or you might be in a position where I was when I was younger that I just literally had no idea, so I just went, fast car, women, really fancy house, with a lift in it. Like, those are the initial things. Now, if I give you 30 seconds now, obviously 30 seconds isn't a long enough period for you to figure this out if you haven't figured it out already, but I'm pretty sure if you had to think of it was just for 30 seconds compared to if you, your immediate thought would be two different things. So I think that's a lot of what we do, that we don't give it any thought, and we just progress through and we just go, yeah, I want these things and this is what I'm going to work towards. Now, I remember saying to people when I'd go to like events and someone would be like, oh, what's your end goal? What are you trying to go to? And I'd be like, I just want to make as much money as possible. It's like, that's a really stupid thing because it, it has no warrant. It does not much thought behind it. It doesn't give me a why. There's no areas that go into it. So it's really hard to define what that is. And the problem that we have is if we just come up with all these things and we just throw those in there, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. So the part that we need to think about is, OK, well, I need to step back. I need to look and really understand what's exciting to me and what's interesting and what's important. Now, it's impossible for us to know what those things are unless we're willing to try other things. And this is something that, if I'm honest, I've probably only really done in the past three, four years. I probably bumbled my way through. And this is why I wanted to kind of talk about it from my perspective. That up until three, four years ago, I just had this set path and I just did the same things and I didn't try anything else. And my goals and my end point was purely based on my experiences to that point. And then about three, four years ago, um, I saw a talk and I'll, I'll share it with, with you afterwards that really got me thinking it'll be Simon Sizenick. I always get his name slightly confused wrong, but um, about the why. And he made me realize that I need to be trying these different experiences for me to figure out what was important. So one of the things that I started doing, and this is super guru-y, so apologies, I couldn't think of another way of writing this that didn't sound a little bit douchey. But try before you buy. There's no reason we can't just be constantly trying different things. So the first thing that I did is I went on Udemy, which is a big kind of video course. Um, it has loads of different courses on literally anything in the world. You can try a new hobby. You can try something for your business. You can literally pay a tenner, and you'll learn something new. So one of the things that I try and do now is constantly, every six months, I try a new hobby on there, and I'm trying to do different things. Now, the point of me doing this is for me to figure out what's important and what's fun. I need to try these things out. I can't just kind of jump in and go hope for the best, or I can't just completely ignore them and just presume that they're going to be beneficial to my life. I also started saying yes to more things. So for example, one of my friends is a really, really good rock climber and boulderer, and he'd been asking me for years to go down with him. And I kept saying no on the basis of, I didn't want to look stupid and not be good at it. Um, but eventually, after kind of seeing this and trying to change what I'm doing, I said yes to it. I went down, I was really crap, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And actually, you don't feel stupid because everyone's falling and everyone's messing up. Now, because of that, that's something that I brought into my life and I particularly enjoy, and I try to make sure that every two weeks I plan that into my kind of system that I'm going to have a bit of time to do that. The other thing that I would say is I don't know from a show of hands if people work for people or if you self-employed. Um, but what I would just say is from this, is this is definitely something that I've learned over the years, that changing jobs and changing industry will give us a totally different view of something. And just because you are really particularly enjoying, let's say you're in project management and you're working for, I don't know, a manufacturing company, 
Now, you might not be particularly enjoying that, but if you, used, if you moved your project management into the creative industry and all of a sudden you were doing something like that, you might really, really enjoy it. But if you're not willing to try different things, you end up down this path that you don't particularly enjoy. So my rule of what I try to do is if I'm not particularly enjoying what I'm doing and I'm not confident in the end goal of where I'm going, is I need to try different things and different experiences for me to mix other elements in. Um, a prime example of this is when we first set my company up, Strafe Creative, um, we were a product design company. So I actually did uh, science-based design and engineering at university. I had a business partner that did uh, graphics and web. And it was a, it sounds really stupid, but like back in the day, you know, 10 years ago, this was like the height of Dragon's Den. So like everyone was like, I'm gonna make loads of money, I'm gonna go on and sell my stupid item, and everyone's gonna absolutely love it. And we were gonna be the company that designed your stupid item. But our USP or so we thought was, you'd come to us, we could design it, but then we could also do all the branding and the marketing literature and the website, and we could almost set you up ready for you to go on and, and pitch to these investors. And what we learned over time was, product design is really, really boring because the initial bit that you do at university is awesome because you're doing the product design, the conceptualization, you're coming up with all the really cool ideas and that was really, really fun. But then you go into the material analysis and all the trial and errors and trying to get it working and the client's really annoyed with you because you've not got it perfect and you just keep going through all these revisions and we just didn't enjoy it. So we decided to cut that and focus on just the web and graphic. And I think we have an error or we have an issue a little bit in, and I guess this is, this is sounding a little bit guru, so apologies, but we have, a, I guess, a problem in Britain where we see failure as a bad thing and we look down on it and sometimes we don't quit on something when we should because we're worried about that appearance of how we'll look to other people. I think America's really, really good that they almost like celebrate it. Like, I've learned those lessons, let's move on, let's do the next thing. So that for us was a big thing that we just cut that and immediately I enjoyed work more. It made me more clear on what I needed to do, although obviously I was still young and still associated with the wrong things, but we were getting there. And then the other one that I think is really important to do is keeping a log. So I keep a, I buy those like really cheap exercise books, you know, they had as a kid that were dead small. I just have like a pack of them. And I carry those around with me everywhere and I have them as my done list, essentially. I write down absolutely everything that I've done in a day and I associate a time with it. And I'd like to pretend that every week, but it's probably more like randomly every three, four weeks, I'll run through it and I'll highlight the bits that I really enjoyed doing. And I'll also highlight the bits in a different color, the bits I don't like doing. And I'll try and pass those off to someone else, essentially. Um, so this is me now. So we've had young me who went for the wrong things and didn't have any particular reasons for it. And then we are here now. And I still don't think I've cracked this. I'm still trying to figure it out as I go along. But my end point as of right now is time flexibility and financial flexibility. Now, those are really, really open and a little bit crap. So let me explain them in a little bit more detail. Um, to me, on what my end goal is, I want to be able to take two months off. I want to be able to be like, right, I'm gonna go here for two months. And I want the business to run completely utterly without me. I still want an income coming in. And I want the flexibility in pretty much everything that I do to allow me to go there and me not have to worry. It also means that I'd like to be able to go, you know, I don't know if Tim's going to, Tim, you're off to Centre Parks next week. Yeah? You're like, you know, I've got the whole week off. And you were like, Ross, you wanna come down for two, three days. I'd like the flexibility to just be like, okay, with no notice, without me putting any form of budget to it. Right, I wanna go do that. Now, you can obviously scale that up and you can be like, okay, you go into another country and we're gonna to go to Dubai and we're gonna do this. I'd still like to be able to do that. And that's what I want to get to. Now, this has made me realize that I now plan everything I do around these things. So for example, one of my other parts I like to be is I'm trying to be as eco-conscious as possible. So I've just moved to a little small electric car, gets me to and from, doesn't cost me anything. But the benefit of me not spending a shed load of money on an R8 means I have loads more financial flexibility to, for me to be able to go on random holidays every other month, which is what I like to do, or randomly go do something that I wouldn't necessarily like to be able to do before. Um, I've moved to very much a minim minimalist style of living with my clothes and what I have. I don't have excessive clothes. I pretty much just have 10 things, maybe 15 things, and then I just rotate those. So if you saw me in like a month's time, I'd come along and I'd probably be wearing a shirt again. Obviously, it would be clean. Um, but that's not particularly important to me, and that gives me my flexibility of what I'm after. So it makes it a lot easier. Now, the financial and the time, that also means that when I'm hiring new staff, yes, I'm hiring staff for a need of the business, but I'm also trying to think, how can I remove myself 
from the business and get myself out of it. Um, I'm still not there. I'm still very much trying to figure it out. I still have, cling to certain things which I probably shouldn't cling to. But having that approach of, right, my end goal is to essentially have me as a bonus to the business. Like if I go in or not go in is, a, is, is kind of a bonus. That's where I'm trying to get to. So having those things now it makes it a lot easier for me. Now, I realize now that I've stood up in front of everyone that this is a super guru y style page that we'll very, very quickly go over, so apologies. Um, but the main things that I wanted people to kind of take from this is go try new hobbies, go try new things at work, because until you're willing to try other things, you, you can't create what this end point's going to be. If you just purely base it on the experiences that you've got now, um, you might not be happy, and you'll probably end up doing what I did, which was a couple of years down the line, you go, this isn't right. Like, I need, this isn't inspiring me. This isn't getting me out of bed. These aren't the things I want to be doing. I would recommend getting a journal or a little cheapy exercise. I might have one on me, actually. I normally have one in my laptop bag. Um, and just write down everything that you do in a day. And it's really nice to look back on as well. And not very often, I should do it probably way more. But what's really nice is grabbing one from a few years ago, and you look through it, and you're like, what was I doing? Like, why was I doing that? So that's always quite fun. And just know what your end game is. So once you've started to try these new things, once you've got these other areas that kind of come into it, you can start to figure out what you want to achieve. And once you know what you want to achieve, you can figure out why you want to achieve it. Um, and I think, again, yeah, this is like the most douchey line I could probably have in here. So apologies, but just do you. Like, don't do something for Instagram. Don't do it for social media. Don't do it because you think that's what people will want to see from you being successful. If you don't want to have that thing, you're not bothered. And vice versa, if you're desperate to have all those fancy things and that's what's important to you, then, then go ahead and do it and don't worry about what other people say. And if people say it's a waste of money, it's not to you. Like that's taken me years to learn and I still struggle with it now. Uh, that's it, thank you guys. Cheers.